We're going to take an interlude here to mention some games that I wasn't able to feature in this countdown. FromSoft. I've been a FromSoft fan for years, all the way up to Elden Ring, which I bought and played at launch, and yet, I simply don't feel confident enough in how I feel to rank them against other games right now. My feelings toward them have begun to shake and have yet to settle. I find myself struggling with these games more and more the older I get, and I'm not talking about difficulty, I'm talking about enjoyment, appreciation, craftsmanship, you know, the things this whole series is based on. I am not saying FromSoft games are bad, I am not saying I don't like them, as I said, I don't know how to feel about them anymore, and I haven't for a couple years now. And I won't know how I feel for sure until I'm able to really sit down and replay them thoroughly. I mean, who knows, maybe I'm just burned out on a 15-year-old formula. It wouldn't be too unreasonable, right? I want to be able to speak about every single entry in this countdown with precision and self-assurance, and I can't do that with FromSoft games at the moment. However, the success of FromSoft has led to a legion of imitators and inspirations, allowing for people like me to find the Souls-like game that more perfectly lines up with the wants and desires that I have for this style of game. And a lot of those games taking inspiration from FromSoft games probably wouldn't even be considered Souls-like at all, such as this game, which I'm so excited to finally be talking to you about, Blasphemous. Now, even though I started off by talking about Souls games, I don't want to imply that Blasphemous is a ripoff of Dark Souls or anything. Just looking at the gameplay should make it obvious that it's not. Its roots lean even more in the Metroidvania direction, when Souls games were already pretty Metroid-esque. But while Blasphemous has a thrilling sense of exploration and some jaw-dropping locations to see, the exploration isn't quite as intense as other Metroidvanias. By that I mean you're not often getting items and abilities to unlock new locations, you're just exploring and finding things naturally. Combat in Blasphemous is far more of a focal point than is typical for the genre, focusing very singularly on you and your sword. Attacking feels weighty and satisfying, and upgrading your combat abilities feels so much more essential as a result of this. It's undoubtedly challenging by design, but never at the player's expense. Progression always feels obtainable, saving is generous and convenient, and the game never seems like it wants to directly cheat the player out of health. The designers simply did their best to create sequences that could match the raw skill of a player, and I respect this game greatly for having the confidence to take that approach. Now, to talk about the obvious, the presentation. Well, first, Carlos Viola's soundtrack really snuck up on me. It's ambient and eerie without actually fading into the background. It clearly conveys multitudes of layered emotions, which at its peak conveys tragedy and loss and despair and torment, even to a guy like me who has experienced relatively small amounts of such emotions. Now for the actual obvious part, I can't fathom a person looking at Blasphemous and not being taken aback by how gorgeous the sprite work is. In no way is this a callback to any era of gaming where pixel art was our only way to deliver game worlds. This is using pixel art in full as its own boundless visual medium, just as we've seen done with hand-drawn art, claymation, and the like. It's detailed enough to convey incredible nuance in the tiniest pixel shift, while also lacking just enough detail to leave some of the specifics of the imagery to your imagination. Seeing the immense talent of these artists combined with the technical prowess of the game designers, particularly in the form of some trailer-worthy boss fights, is a beautiful union of skill sets that couldn't have been brought together more perfectly. I am nowhere close to being tired of engaging with Blasphemous's combat, exploring its environments, or internalizing its soundtrack. It's a game that seems to agree with me on many levels with regards to what makes these kinds of games fun, and we get along great because of that. 